Hell yeah, man. We just finished up an amazing day riding. Uh, this is double dose remote session. Look at this guy. First That's remote vlog. This guy is, oh, you can't really pick him up on the video. He's uh, doing some pretty strong crunches out there. Man I staying active. to these people that just get out there and do, that's cool that they got the gym equipment there and like a lot of older people getting moving is the best thing. Yeah, man. I, I, um, I kind of wish I used that gym, our dog gym equipment a lot more. I have some near my house. Oh yeah, I've been killing for some. I thought, oh, damn, I never see any around me and I wish I, there would be some. I thought they're, they're quite popular around my way. There's a few of them, but um, I feel like the rain gets to them and the resistance gets a bit like rusty. It's a little bit jarring sometimes, mm. um, but it's pretty cool. And like, it's cool. Like it all uses your own body weight against you and you can set the like difficulty. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, guys, we just did a bike ride. We were just out hitting you with double dose on the move. The first remote vlog. Um, this is uh, a new segment that we're trialing out. Bit of a off the cuff live discussion session with mm. Depeche and Daniel. Mm. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll uh, give our little hot takes as we drive around. Um, these will happen pretty sporadically, different times of the day, different events, and um, yeah, we'll just pop up. Try to day. fill it in with all that different, unique content. Keep it interesting, keep it active. <sighs> so we're out in like Sydney West, and I went to a big park and went for a big ride, and we are a little tired now, and my butt is pretty sore. Yeah, my butt's pretty sore, and uh, I mean, you know, me and Daniel were in the bathroom for a while, but uh, we're okay now. A uh, bit of fun. Uh, my first time on a bike in years, a long, long time, and especially riding that long as well. That was um, not you're not used to it. I'm not used to I it. I ride a bit more, but that wasn't too tiring for me. It was more just like my butt's getting uncomfortable. But like they say, you never forget how to ride a bike, and your boy was on it straight away. Max balance, full endo and mono. Dude, I was um, I was riding like. Those female horse riders, I was side straddling the, sh the ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did good. Oh, man. And now we got the lovely Sydney traffic just to take us home show on this some, beautiful Monday. Show some of it. Let me get a little bit of this action right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. Damn. Is that multiple cars with bad infrastructure? Must be you Sydney. You know what? Damn. You love it, baby. Damn. I love Sydney. Let's just drive around with our intro music on loop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just constant. It's like with the massive sub out the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you got to rep the area, you know? you got to rep the area. Dude, I had my uh, my first car was an Integra, and I had the biggest sub in the back. Um, yeah, mine, mine was a Marina, and I had a 95% of the boot was sub. Yeah, dude. The guy that I bought my car off, he actually built a housing for the sub custom built box in the back. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a Rockerford four skate too. It was like one of the best subs you could get on the market. That thing rattled my car and it wasn't even like ever on like half of the base. It was crazy. Yeah, I, I put the, I had the biggest shit box and I put the biggest freaking sound system in. I had um, uh, Pioneer speakers and uh, I think I had, uh, was it JBL sub? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge. I think it's good because we, we, we use the, during the sub, like massive Fast and Furious trend of having a huge sub in the car, at least we got to do that during the time where dubstep was on the on the rise, so we could get like mass max use of the sub. <laughs> you know, it was like everyone just trying to find the most underground dubstep song to just pump the sub as hard as it can. Just wow, 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 wow. I remember um, when I was studying, there was this dancer who used to dance freestyle to dubstep. Very Whoa. interesting. And he would just like flow his body to like the most random sounds. It's very strange. Do you remember Melbourne Shuffle days? <laughs> oh man. Do those little um, shuffle compilations and then yeah, just like yeah. have all the hue, different hues of the colors going over yeah, the video. Yeah, 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 that's it. Look at this. Wow. What are you doing? Wow. I don't mean, I don't want to generalize Daniel. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> you just stopped. At the invisible traffic light in the middle of a roundabout, in between two lanes, flying <laughs> on both sides. Sydney, I love it. It's so beautiful. It's so cute. It's so cute. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> so <cute. laughs> if those know who the reference we're talking about, we love you and you are cool. You're from the right gen. The good gen. You know, good taste. 
Excellent, excellent taste. Wait, what was that? Oh yeah, the Melbourne Shuffle. Oh yeah, dude. There's just shifting hue and. Did you have a pair of Ray Bans? The white Ray Bans. No, I didn't. I did, bro. I couldn't afford them. What do you mean? You got? I bought knockoff pairs. Oh, and then I, I couldn't care less about that crap. They were like twelve bucks. I don't know if it was a from cult. Barclay Markets. Um, it might have been from the markets. Yeah, yeah it must okay. have. Because it was so popular, I was like buying Nike socks. I don't know. You just every every market had them. I don't know if it was the same. I don't know if it swept the world, but there was this uh, craze in like when we we're in high school called shuffling. It was just a stupid dance stuff or like EDM music, and um, everyone bought this like the same type of shoe, which was like a plimsoll slip on fuck all um, grip on the face. Yeah. Just this little like sock, white sock, and you just wear them with like big fucking baggy pants and dance. I despise the dance. I remember used to give my friends shit for even doing it. Yeah, I didn't like it. I, I had a couple of mates that thought it was like amazing. And you know what? I typed in our school name and Melbourne Shuffle and there's still tons of videos up there of old um, compilations of like, and they all give the, each other the, the like uh, dance names. Like uh, this is Psycho and then this is like um, initial something something. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, uh, the crew names. Is the, the shuffle thing. crews. Yeah, the shuffle crew. Yeah. And they had, oh, dude, and they had like fucking like Taekwondo jackets. Like they had like the jackets with the emblem and stuff. Like what were part of what shuffle crew you were part of. And they had the big of. baggy pants. Yeah. Like I have to buy these parachute the shuffle pants. Yeah. And yes, it had yes. like the DEF CON badge yeah, or like yeah, a yeah, uh, Decepticon yeah, yeah. patches on it and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and, uh, they would go off and be like, look at this fucking late night in the back streets of school or whatever. Car parks yeah. with the lights on. Or every fucking piss up, every house party you went to. There's Stop always one kid shuffling in the dance floor. You're like, dude, Please have go. a cruiser. Yeah, shut the hell up. Have a cruiser and shut the fuck up. <laughs> have a cruiser. Have a guava cruiser and shut the fuck up. Yeah. yeah. Dude, oh, I remember my friend's 18th. I was trying to be cool and this chick was asking um, if, if I could open the cruiser for her. And yeah. I'm like, no worries, I got you. And I did the off the brick thing where you slam it. Yeah. And I slammed it too hard and the fucking whole top of the bottle shattered. And the glass went in and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. She's like, thank you. And she started drinking it, dude. The fucking glass would have gone in there. And I'm like, don't drink it. Did you play it cool? And we're like, I, I, oh. I low key cut my palm and I'm like, here you go. And then she walked away and I was looking at my palm. I'm like, I fucked up. <laughs> what have I done? But you know, you're too drunk to care. I thought you were going to say you shatter like the brick. No, dude, like the whole top of the glass just like, it was like jagged edges. I think glass definitely went like, in that cruiser. Eh, this is bleeding yeah. so much. Why does it say spicy? I had, um, uh, I think I had a mate at a friend's house be like, hey, I'm gonna just uh, break the top off on the like kitchen counter. I was like, damn, they chipped it. Oh my God, as if you do it inside, dude. I'm actually pretty good at doing that now. I used to do it so much, I guess being a bartender as well. Um, yeah. It's all, it's just a, a fluid movement. Fuck, I didn't know you are a bartender. Oh wait, yes I do. Yeah, back you. at the sports club. Yeah, yeah, sports yeah. Club. Back in the day, I had the, um, the big twirly mustache while I was studying and I knew fuck all how to make a cocktail but everyone wanted me to make the cocktails because I looked like the cocktail guy. And I asked- You have the curly mustache. I have the curly mustache and I, and I, as soon as anyone caught me making a cocktail, they'd be like, can I order blah, 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 but can he make it? Just because I look like I knew what I was doing. And I knew fuck all, dude, I was reading the fucking instructions on the laminated cocktail sheets. Yeah, yeah. And I was begging the bar manager. I'm like, can I do a course? Because I'm like clearly the one that always has to do them. They're like, we don't do that. We can't afford it. When I left the club, I saw everyone do a, a, a cocktail course and I'm like, could have used it. How shit is that? I'm making apple martinis. Special like, martinis. Did, can you? Do you remember any of the the drinks you made? I don't remember any of the drinks I made, but I remember all the techniques. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I'm at home and uh, you know I got a free like a nice Sunday, got the girlfriend over or mum wants a drink, I'll, I'll jazz it up a little bit, try yeah, and put nice. a little extra. Yeah, nice. And now like at family gatherings, I'm just in charge of making the cocktails. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's fun. It's something. Uh, it's it's. So you bust out the curly mustache on those days. Yeah, yeah. I grow. I only I only do cocktails in in November. Okay. Exclusively. Yeah. Everyone lines up around the block. They actually have to close off whole suburbs. And <laughs> Can they're like, he make it? I'm okay to have a nice Sunday sipper with the friends and all that, but he has to make it. And yeah. it's a big build off big build of my just my mustache. So were you just getting back orders and be like, just let him make it. I fucking am slammed. Yeah, it's, and it, dude. It was a type of place where like you wouldn't get a cocktail because no one knew what they were doing. It's just a sports club. And 
you got the people that are clearly from out of town, like, oh, I'll get, I'll get an espresso martini. And as soon as anyone ordered a cocktail, and the like line is like, the line is as far as you can see. When you're taking orders, you're not even looking up. You're like, hey man, what can I get you? And you're just like, it's like a dance. Everyone's dancing around each other because you're just like pouring beers, pouring spirits. As soon as someone ordered a cocktail, everything halted. You knew you by back order. Everyone, the line was just going to get long because it took so long to get a cocktail out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does take a little bit. And of course, the and whoever set up the bar didn't give a shit about making sure all the ingredients were there, dude. So you're running around looking for a lemon for a garnish or some shit because nothing's there. <laughs> How hard is it's it? It's not no? made. For, they're not ready for this shit. How hard is it to just bring some lemons and leave them there? No there? cocktails if you're gonna do that. I should be a manager of all places. Yeah, that's, that's I, I would exactly bring up the productivity of everywhere I go. This is it. This was wrong. Get rid of it. Fix it. Fix it. All right, done. Hundred percent, dude. 100%. You are like the optimizer. They'll bring him in. Bring in the optimizer. Yeah, yeah. I'm a uh, Newman at the end of that um, Muffin Tops episode. Comes with an N- on the NSX, like Mr. What is it, Mr. White in Pulp Fiction. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to be curt, but I understand time is of the essence. And he just brings up this bag of milk and just starts shoveling muffin, <laughs> muffins in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, I reckon I, I'm like, I'm just out of work, man. Like, I'm constantly causing a fuss because things should be better. Mm. Things should be more efficient. Yeah. I hate wasting time. <laughs> Look at the shits. Streamline! The optimizer. What do you think Newman's doing these days? In acting. You think he's still acting? I think he's mad retired, dude. Yeah. He, um, he lost a lot of weight post upside for didn't he? You have to, man. He was already, what, pushing 40 or 40. Yeah. And he was big. He was a big guy. Real big. He's a big and, guy. And uh, you can't be that big and beyond 40 and okay. I think the last time I seen him was um, that Super Bowl halftime show. They did a little reunion and they were so old. And they went to the actual um, cafe that's the establishing shop, but they actually went to that cafe, the inside of it. And um, it was good, it was a nice little bit. I think it was like maybe to promote comedians in cars. But um, they had Newman, George and Seinfeld, pretty good. Um, Julia has aged really well. Really, really well. I saw like uh, the wife was on TikTok and saw her yesterday. And I'm like, fuck, she's looking great. Dude, as I've like, I feel like when I... George is looking like like Jason Alexander looks old. He looks very old, dude. Very, very old. Tiny little eyes. Because <laughs> he's always got glasses on. When, dude, did, did you find when you were younger, when someone took their glasses off, you were like, what the fuck happened to your face? It's like so Their much eyes much. just get so small when they have like big man- magnification. Oh, it depends. Like... My wife's got like, you know, she can't see fast and when yeah. her glasses are on, her eyes are tiny. Right. And so when she takes them off, I'm like, your eyes are massive. Just <laughs> full dilated. I'm like, you don't realize how big your eyes are. But yeah. Oh my God, you have big eyes. Look how big your eyes are. But, um. Hey, how many of our listeners listen to Carl and Jackie O that are in Australia? I hate them. Um, unfollow us. Unfollow us. <laughs> I could not. I think Carl's the biggest dickhead in the world, right? Uh, they're both. I just. I hate the whole idea of it, dude. That to me is the same as free air TV, just an agenda. Oh man! Quick story time for the listeners. This Go. is fucking straight up the bat. You should. T- you should tell this story. Go. It's regarding your GoPro. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What we're filming oh, on right now? Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Something went crazy. Went down today. No, Daniel's you gonna tell be. It. You I tell it. Okay, so. The whole idea was today was to do all the remote vlog, but also to get a little bit of biking in, because Daniel's been telling me that we should go for a bike ride. I don't know if you can see in the back, but he's got two bikes on a little bike mm. uh, bike rack back there. He goes, uh, look, we'll bring the GoPros, charge them up. I bring mine, he's got his, which we're using right now. And um, he's got his little backpack. This is on a little tri- uh, monopod, and he's, he's getting the bikes off the rack. So I'm just standing there, you know, looking pretty. And we set off. We go. We, we go, go we're about. We go about three, four k's. Yeah, we're, we're we're into the bike right now. And I'm. He goes. Do you have your GoPro? Let's load it up. So I I start mine up. And he's like, Wait, you got my GoPro? I'm like, Nah, it's in your backpack. And he goes, No, it's not, because this monopod would be sticking out. I open his backpack. And he's like, Oh man, I've left it in the car. We're like, Oh whatever. How long were we out for? A couple of hours? Yeah, a couple of hours. A couple of hours. hours. The park. It's in a main car park. Main car park. There's. There's people, there's people, people parking a meter in front, there's people parking a meter behind, there's constant cars driving past where we park the car. We get back to the car two hours later, Daniel's looking in the windows just trying to look for his GoPro. It's sitting on his roof. 
the car roof and I'm like, you're so lucky. If the bike racks weren't on the car, this oh, would not it? have blended in. I think the monopod made it look like it was part of the bike rack and yeah, yeah. just camouflaged in. Yeah. Dude, I can't believe no one saw it. Oh my god, amazing. Oh, amazing. But you know, maybe someone did see it and be like, I'm not gonna take it, I'm not a dickhead. And look, I'm in my area, gone. In my <laughs> if they, I feel like in Sydney, no chance. If you were out. Uh, yeah, we were, that just shows you the quality of the people. Yeah, 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 exactly. Where we're out today, it was a nicer group of people. If you're an hour out of Sydney, people would have actually fucking phoned you up and like lost GoPro call this number. Um, and delivered it to your house. If you're in our area, um, they probably would have taken the GoPro and kept the car. You know, that's it. <laughs> I smashed out a window. I smashed out a window <gasps> and look and and, and stolen the two dollar coin that was um, hiding in Your there. face when we saw the GoPro on top of the car, you're like. Ah! Uh, it was so good. It was such a relief. I was like, damn, I can't believe that happened, man. That was good. Well, you was like, it's just like you, man. That means you left two things behind in that park. What? Your keys. What? That t- you told you told me the story of how you dropped your keys in the park as well, and you came back and they're still there. Yeah, but it was in the grass. That park is I magical. Never, you would have never seen that. No one ever goes there. That key, the, the park is magical. It doesn't let. It doesn't. Um, Do you know how I, I found the keys that time? So I was, I lay. So I went on a scooter ride, and I came back, and I must have gone 50 kilometers from my house, and then lay under a tree. And then when I came back to the, tr- uh, uh, when I came back home, I realized my keys had fell out of my pocket, and it must have been when I was lying under the tree. Yeah. And then. When I went to the park back, I had taken a photo under the tree when I was lying down and thought, because it looked really nice. And the way I found the picture was I ended up looking at the photo and lining up the tree branches until I found oh, the tree no I was way. under. That and is I was like, awesome. this is it. It's this one and I found the fucking keys. That is like, so yes. lucky. It's so lucky that you did that and also so lucky that there was a point of reference in a shot that you took facing up, dude. If it was yes. just clouds, that's it, gone. Yeah, that's it, gone. Damn, that's, that's lucky, dude. That's smart. That's a MacGyver shoot. That's a MacGyver you're, shoot. You're a detective there. Oh man, that was great. Ooh, lucky. I'm so happy it was there because now we're filming on it and this is a much better GoPro. Yeah. Um, what was the last time you went to the drive-ins? The cinema? Just there. Um, I just gave away our location. I've only been once. Um, I've only been once. And yeah. it was, must have been 2011. 2011, 2012 was the last time I went to a drive. I, I didn't find the experience very good because my car speakers were not good. Right. So then it was just like crap. I was in my friend's car. Oh, no way. I think I was in my dad's. Um, yeah, I was in my dad's car and he had a um, Honda CRV okay. SUV. So it's actually pretty good. Nice and high up. Uh, it's pretty good. You gotta have good car room, I would say. Good car room. But you know, you can always deck out the um, boot and fold down the back seats. Can, but we had a tiny car, so it was really hard. Prevent. I remember my neck was just wrecked after. Get a little bit of mattress in the back. Snacks, yeah. babies. It's not too bad. Not my number one pick. I prefer the real cinema. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what we should give um, a go? That uh, 4D cinema. I want to check that out. Wait, we're sprays you in the face and shit. Yeah. The wind. Let's do that. Do they even make them anymore? They just recently launched it. Where? In Hoyts. Which one? Um, I'm pretty sure Entertainment there's corner? one in the city. And I'm not sure, but I think there's one out our way as well. Oh, watch out. Um, yeah, dude. All right, well, we can check it out. Uh, God damn, Dan, you're gonna run us on the road. I wanna get there, but I wanna get there alive. How good were the golden ages of YouTube where... Would you watch a lot of people vlog? Daily vlog? Um, yeah, and I felt like it was just more down to earth and there was not much agenda to what no. was being put out. They were getting money, just, so there was no need for targeted ads and real. shit. It was all real. Yep. It felt real. They all did what they wanted because they were getting in, they were earning a living and um, Adpocalypse hadn't started yet. I used to watch so many daily vlogs too. It's such a vibe. Just shit like this. like. I, I actually really enjoyed getting caught up with like what people are up to and stuff like that. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, I watched them more like a lot of Smosh. Uh, oh, I watched back their old videos and I just thought, man, they were so funny and so good. And they're too like, uh, obviously like uh, Ian, uh, Anthony left. Yeah. And um, they had like the big breakup. But like that, 
They expanded too far. That's the problem as well. Yeah, they got I too much money, and they I had think to that's obviously. Like Anthony said he said it become this thing, and he didn't want it to be anymore. It was a massive company. They had all these different sub companies. They had like a crew yeah. and like uh, employees, and I'm like, I mean, look, I obviously you have to do that when you make too much money. Mm-hmm. They were making so much money, they had to start a business, probably get production value up, all these deals. I get that, but then it, yeah, it takes it away from what essentially it was with two friends starting just making funny videos with yeah and I think he said he had lost like what he had wanted to come like with his best friend and he wanted to make more original like just hey this is just us and we're just doing kooky videos and he said that was gone and that would really suck I think yeah um listeners out there we um you know I, I, I don't know if you guys know but me and Daniel didn't go to the same high school together we actually met after high school probably while we were around studying while we were studying mm-hmm. both studying and um we like after no, like I was working I was already working? working yeah I was working I think I was studying at the time and um oh no actually no I just started working I just yeah, started working yeah we both started working okay and um okay so we're pretty probably like 21, 22 I think yeah about 22, 22 yeah about and 22. um and after like becoming close such close friends we realised that we would have like been like smosh if we had grown up in high school together we would have been doing wish. crazy I, videos I was and shit. always asking my friend to make the videos with me but he didn't like I felt like it was always me putting in so much effort yeah I was always behind the camera I took the camera everywhere yeah and I, I had to do all the work and yeah. all the editing and then they would just show up and then the thing would happen but it was even like pulling teeth to get them to even want to do it yeah yeah for so sure I feel like we would have done so much crazy shit together because you were even like trying to do editing with like just you know pause yeah. the camera and do the next take i was doing that stuff so we, we had the same type of creativity in mind yeah we, we wanted to just video shit video everything I, I tried to film as much as i could but you know if i didn't have any people with me you just start to like lose your enthusiasm with that i think all my tapes that i would have recorded on little home, home videos they're all gone oh, no. but i cleaned out the hard drive the other day and i got a lot of um, stuff from like my old like LG slide phone and shit like that yeah, okay. videos. Oh, funnily enough, mm-hmm. I have a bunch of footage. So, um, for those international listeners, we have a Olympic park from when Sydney hosted the 2000 Olympics. And a friend of mine was um, really, really good in gymnastics and he had actually made it to state. Mm-hmm. So he was actually training in the Sydney Olympic Park gymnastics. This guy trying to avoid number plate, uh, getting ticketed. There's a guy having eight here. Beep, 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 eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a guy with number plate eight beep, 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 eight. He's trying to fool them. Yeah, yeah. So when the when the flash goes off, they're like, oh, "What is it? Eight or a B?" That's pretty cool, actually. How how sus are those number plates where it's silver and they have like this um, metallic white? Yeah, letters. you can't see shit. Barely see anything, and then they have like um. Freaking like Xenon uh, down lights over the number plate shining on it so you can just barely see. And it's always a piece of shit driving them. Because they're like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna call, they're gonna call the police on my, how, how big is that bike? <laughs> it's a touring bike. And he's so distracted. Country. They're so relaxed. What was I saying? Your friend in gymnastics. Yeah, so I had this friend in gymnastics and he actually was like training for state. So he had like a professional trainer and they were using the actual facilities that the Olympians used. Um, this is years later, so obviously it's just professional equipment now. And because he had like, this is years later, he had stopped training and all that. And because he knew the trainer, he hooked us up that we all went one day and we just slipped the trainer 20 bucks each and he just let us do whatever we wanted in the professional equipment. So they had like the full foam pit, the big obstacles, the ropes, and we were just doing like the craziest tricks into the foam pit. That's sick. And there's these professionals right next to us like, practicing their heart out and we're just laughing and like doing the dumbest shit and I got footage of it all dude it's crazy I should still have that flash oh that's sick when you, if see. you come around I'll bring my hard drive around one day I gotta get all my hard drives like fixed because I have so many just sitting there that are just cooked and don't work anymore and I'm like I need to get the data off this because it's like amazing old videos and, and, and yeah dude you want to lose that stuff you don't want to lose that I just want those I'm worried that my childhood tapes are ruined. I need to get them converted to DVD. And um, I'm really scared that the head's probably like just sun damaged and they're not gonna come out right. And I don't no, wanna lose them. I can them. probably recover it. I don't know, it's tough, man. They're all... You'd be surprised what they can do. I gotta find a place that does them. Yeah, that's it. You gotta find a place that'll give you good quality like conversions. Because DVD is like, yeah, it's fine, but DVD is also DVD. I guess, yeah, we'll put, they'll put it on a hard drive. Yeah, put it on a hard drive and, like, good quality, maybe. Yeah. Because maybe you could just buy the tape, 
convert it yourself and do it. I thought about that, but then I'm like, what's the point of buying it if I only use it once? Or rent it. Can you rent it? Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Um, I've looked into that. I've thought about that too with uh, all my grandma's home videos and stuff. And I'm like, man, we got to get it all converted. There's so much shit. And every time we watch it, it degrades the quality a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, we want to like keep it. I gotta, I gotta find them, man. This is a great day. You know what would end this day amazingly? A barbecue. A barbecue. A barbecue for sure, man. Charcoal barbecue. Damn. Let's do it. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go past the shops right now. Light them up. Get the sheesh. Us guys. So thank you for enjoying our remote vlog. Remote vlog. Um, you reckon you throw a bit of the bike footage in there? Yeah, maybe I'll throw a bit of it as an overlay. Yeah, a little bit of a little montage. Um, you can have a look at what we did. Yeah, a little bit of a off the cuff chat for you guys. Um, something like not planned, so it's kind of like nice to just hear some like old school stories. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's what Double Dose is all about. So um, yeah, thank you for watching, listening, and uh, we'll catch you on the next remote vlog, and we'll see you on the next episode, releasing Monday. Okay, bye guys. Bye. bye.